Ladies and gentlemen, for those who are able to do so, please stand for the national anthem of Barbados. You may be seated. Mr. Keith Joseph, President of the Caribbean Association of National Olympic Committees, KNOC. Mr. Brian Lewis, Secretary General, KNOC. Ms. Sandra Osborne, President of the Barbados Olympic Association, Inc. Mr. Erskine Simmons, Secretary General of the BOA, Inc., and other members of the BOA Board of Directors. Mr. Alan Sorizi, President of Le Comité Régional Olympique et Sportif Guadeloupe. Dr. Sasha Sutherland, Executive Director of the Caribbean Regional Anti-Doping Organization and current Chair of the BOA's Education Commission, as well as other members of the Commission. Mr. Ryan Brathwaite, Regional Development Manager, Americas and Caribbean of the Commonwealth Games Federation. Mr. Glenn Clark, Manager of the BOA and other members of staff. Our keynote speaker this evening, Ms. Sherita O'Dell. Mr. Neil Murrell, Director of the National Sports Council. Mrs. Shelly Ann Yi Chung, General Manager of the International Game Technology IGT and other members of the IGT team. Mr. Charles Walcott, Sales Executive of Glacial Ice Barbados Limited. Bishop Selwyn Brathwaite, Presiding District Bishop, Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies, the Barbados District. Presidents and Secretaries of National Sporting Federations, our esteemed facilitators and panelists for this weekend. Alumni of the International Session for Young Participants and our Olympic Ambassadors, National Session for Young Participants alumni, other specially invited guests joining us here in person and via Zoom as well as YouTube, members of the media, our 2024 participants, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. <laughs> I want to officially welcome you to this evening's opening ceremony for the fourth edition of the Barbados Olympic Association's National Session for Young Participants. I am Marsha Boyce, one of the working group members for the NSYP, and it is my pleasure to be your Master of Ceremonies this evening here at the Barbados Beach Club. Now first, I would like to invite Bishop Selwyn Brathwaite to lead us in a word of prayer. Thank you. Could you please stand? Father, this evening we are grateful for the opportunity to be gathered here at this location for this very special occasion, the National Session for Young Participants. As a people, we do not underestimate the value of taking the time to make such an investment into our nation's youth. 
I do trust that as the Academy facilitates this initiative, that every single participant would eagerly seize the opportunity to engage in meaningful discussion, to increase the understanding of an area of endeavor that can take them into greatness, open their minds, give them creative insight, ideas, and the necessary skill set in these forums that will develop their potential and expand their capacity in the area of sports. My pray, Lord God, for the presenters is that they will share wisdom that create a thirst in the minds of their audience and the desire to explore, to examine, and excel in their various areas of giftedness. May what the presenters share leave an impact in the minds of the listeners, etching in their hearts principles that will be unforgettable. Give these presenters the ability to detect candidates whose lives carry a mark of excellence, whose intentions and dreams will represent the values of this association and to make their nation proud. May these participants come to the realization over the next few days that sports goes beyond their natural ability and can only be sustained by discipline, teachability, and the capacity to develop moral, social, and spiritual capital on and off the field of play. May they never be ashamed to acknowledge you and involve you in their aspirations. Give them the resilience to stand up against negative behavior that will threaten to abort their future. May they know beyond the shadow of a doubt that they can do all things through Christ that strengthens them. And there's nothing impossible or unreachable to those that believe. Give them, Father, the passion and their power to achieve and to birth what has been deposited in their lives. And I pray, Lord God, that the time spent here would serve as a foundation that would take them into greatness. So, Lord, we pray today that this session will be of a resounding success. And we look forward with great anticipation for the fruit of our labor. We ask these things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Bishop Brathwick. You may be seated. Now, the national session for young participants, now in its fourth year, has definitely grown to become one of the marquee events of the National Olympic Academy of the Barbados Olympic Association. And this initiative focuses on developing young leaders in sport, building capacity through the lens of Olympism and its various ideals. It aims to tackle current issues relevant to youth, relevant to sport, and relevant to the Olympic movement. So to tell you a little bit more about this year's session in particular, as well as to give you the official welcome, is Ms. Venetia Cadogan, Director of the National Olympic Academy. Thank you, Madam Master of Ceremonies. And I will not go through that protocol again. It would take up all the time allocated to me for my speech. So the protocol is established. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the National Olympic Academy of Barbados at the Barbados Olympic Association, Inc., I welcome all of you, whether in person, attending via Zoom, or following on social media, to the opening ceremony of this fourth national session for young participants, familiarly known as NSYP 2024. NSYP was born out of a vision to provide a platform for young emerging leaders in sport to engage in dialogue on issues of relevance in sport. And as the Madam Master of Ceremonies indicated, it was also intended to bring attention to Olympism and its ideals and increase the knowledge of the participants of Olympic issues. Ultimately, NSYP aims to develop leadership capacity by encouraging young sports persons to examine the environment in which they engage and determine how to navigate through it and how to develop that environment. One highlight of NSYP is that by the end of this session, two of the participants, one male and one female, will be named as our next representatives to attend the annual International Olympic Academy session for young Olympic ambassadors held every year in Olympia, Greece. 
I extend best wishes to the six individuals who were successful in the screening so far and have reached the final phase in the selection process. Stand and let them see the six of you who will be going through the final process. Thank you, you may be seated. NSYP began in 2021 as a one day event. The participants recommended that it should be held over two days. We listened and in 2022, we held a two day event. The participants that year complained that it was too short and suggested it should be longer. We didn't listen and held another two day event in 2023. The complaint was the same. <laughs> For the first time this year, we decided to organize a three day event and make it residential. So the session began this morning and the participants are staying here at Barbados Beach Club for the weekend. In addition, we extended an invitation to all members of the Caribbean Association of National Olympic Committees, KNOC, to send a participant as our guest. Today, we are welcoming three participants from the KNOC membership that took up our offer. We are pleased to acknowledge Stacy Hill, representing the Dominica Olympic Committee, Azaria Vantapool from the St. Kitts and Nevis Olympic Committee. And Neil Mwane, I'm not going to try my French this evening, from the CROS in Guadeloupe. <laughs> Welcome. Their presence here will add another dimension to NSYP and will bring divergent perspectives to the discussion, which should make this an even more enriching event. However, I am warning this year's participants that we will not be listening to any recommendations to extend the length of NSYP next year. Even though I already heard you mentioning that this morning, that it needs to be this morning, that three days will not be enough. The theme of NSYP 2024, the athlete in modern society, inspiring and fostering unity, compels the participants to consider a number of current and complex issues. With topics like these on the program, sport and sustainability, talent versus technology, the making of an elite athlete, gender identity and its impact on the sporting landscape, making room for the Paralympic athlete in modern society, among others, you can imagine what the atmosphere will be like for the next three days. To the participants, I know that you are in for a life-changing experience. The diversity of the activities and the individuals who will interact with you will leave you with mind-blowing and gratifying memories. Listen carefully. Ask the presenters and the panelists several questions, probing and difficult ones. Participate fully in the group discussions. Let your ingenuity come to the fore in those creative displays that you will conceive for that session. And maximize the opportunity you will have at the end of the session to make revolutionary recommendations for sport in your country and the region. I am sure that those of you attending this opening ceremony are glad to be here to share in the excitement of the exhilarating days ahead for these young men and women. And that warm feeling must be making you feel welcome. Do enjoy our NSYP 2024 opening ceremony. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Cadogan. Now, at the Barbados Olympic Association, the National Academy works very closely with the BOA's Education Commission in delivering programs of this nature. I would now like to invite Dr. Sasha Sutherland, BOA Director and Chair of the Education Commission, to give her opening remarks. Hello, everyone. I stand on the protocol that has been established. So this morning, I eagerly watched as the Olympic Museum tour was being conducted and participants engaged in the history of the Olympic Games and the Olympic Movement. I sat in my office at the Barbados Olympic Center and had a moment of elation when a former Play Like a Girl participant, now young, hopefully Olympic ambassador, walked into the room. We had the privilege of creating that program for her and for other young athletes to ensure sport and physical activity could be a safe space for young girls. I glanced around and I saw a few other familiar faces and thought, the future of sport in our region looks bright. 
because in that group, I saw a former footballer who I know has been in football before she could walk or talk. I saw a cricketer who I recently met as she decided to engage more in physical activity and sport. I saw an athlete from my tennis club who is my daughter's favorite person simply because she takes the time to greet her. And I saw a young lady who ran the Queen's Bator Relay with us as a primary school student, here today as a future sport leader. Why am I mentioning these anecdotes? Well, you see, what I experienced with these participants, and perhaps what is unique about some of your experiences, is that your history in sport and physical activity reinforces the goal of the International Olympic Academy's Young Olympic Ambassador Program to make a better world through physical education, through sport, and the sharing of Olympic values. The most notable, in my opinion, being respect, excellence, and friendship. This year's session theme, The Athlete in Modern Society, Inspiring and Fostering Unity, is critical because as athletes and individuals proficient in sports and other forms of physical exercise, you have a unique privilege to inspire others to greatness, to overcome adversity, to advocate for change, or to defend a position that might be unpopular where other voices outside of sport would never render, would also render those campaigns useless. So let me demonstrate. Recently at the Olympics, athletes like Simone Biles, Katie Ledecky, and Sydney McLaughlin Leveroni have leveraged their agency on and off the field of play to foster unity around issues like athlete well-being, mental health, gender inequality, political oppression, while winning multiple gold medals in their events. The world was more inquisitive about their personal advocacy as a result of their greatness on the field of play. Closer to home, Thea Lafour from Dominica, Julian Alfred, St. Lucia, Lyndon Victor, Anderson Peters, Grenada, Karen McMaster, and Mihan Lopez have centered small Caribbean communities whose Google searches have exponentially increased because of these athletes' performances on the field of play and in the media room. My personal favorite is Karani James, who sets a great example of those Olympic values, respect, excellence, and friendship in his simple maneuver of shaking every competitor's hand at the end of the race, whether he medals or not, simply because it is who he is and it is his culture as a Caribbean athlete. Inspiring and fostering unity is not always a walk in the park, to use an old colloquialism, as we may never be in a space where everyone agrees on a particular topic, thought, method, or action. The prerequisite for unity is not always about agreeing, but fostering unity even where there are differences of opinion, location, and performance. And especially when the playing field is not level for everyone. Take Imane Khalif, for example, who has had her femininity questioned simply because she did not meet the stereotypically feminine look, approach. And Ilona Meyer's pushback by privileging a muscular femininity as a star rugby player. Consider the continued dialogue over beach volleyball uniforms that appear systemically racist. Consider, most notably at the closing ceremony of Paris 2024, Sifan Hassan's freedom to wear her hijab when some countries have secular or gender laws that dictate otherwise. It seems like a lot of these challenges converge on female bodies, but I guarantee you that men and women alike are affected by issues of mental health and sport performance, competition manipulation and doping. While men, like women, face the performance of gender burden in sport and society. Both men and women can therefore inspire and foster unity despite differences of opinion, location and performance. That is the goal of programs like the NSYP. We want to ensure that there is support, allyship, and respectful dissent on matters that affect athletes and the Olympic movement. So the focus this weekend is on you, our youth, and how fitting since August 12th was commemorated as the International Day of the Youth. We pour out so that you can make the difference. 
We depend on you as architects of tomorrow to be agents of positive change around local, regional, and international challenges, whether they be gender inequality, climate action, or sport diplomacy. So I urge you, using Martin Luther King Jr.'s words, to consider making a career of humanity. You will make a greater person of yourself, a greater nation of your country, and a finer world to live in. With that, have fun and enjoy the weekend. Thank you, Dr. Sutherland, BOA Director and Chair of the Education Commission. And as you heard our previous speakers mention, the theme for this year's Young Participant Session is The Athlete in Modern Society, Inspiring and Fostering Unity. This is a topic our participants will explore, explore over the next two days. One of the key considerations will be the variety of roles that a modern athlete can hold. Our keynote speaker this evening will take a closer look at this topic. She is Miss Sharita O'Dell. Miss O'Dell, an Olympic qualifier in the long jump for the 1996 Centennial Games in Atlanta, competed for Rice University in Houston, Texas. She gained her MBA from the Inter-American University of Puerto Rico, where she was also an assistant coach in the jumps. She has held the national long jump record for just under 20 years and also represented Barbados in triple jump. She has held positions of acting general manager, sales and marketing manager, as well as operations manager for a variety of four-star resorts. She has been a real estate broker for 18 years and was twice featured on the popular HGTV channel and served as the weekly real estate correspondent on Morning Barbados. Her company Speak Life produces motivational speeches, self-improvement workshops, and empowerment events. She was a radio and television sports analyst for track and field for several years, is married, and has two sons. To guide us through a closer look at the athlete's role in fostering unity, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Ms. Sharita O'Dell. Thank you so much, and um, it's such a pleasure to be here. And I want to say also, I have to thank Ms. Venetia Cadogan for the invitation. Um, I didn't take it lightly. Having been affiliated with the Olympics, myself, I found it truly an honor to come here and speak to you. And uh, we're going to look at unity. And one of the things that you may think of automatically coming out of Olympic season is, what do athletes have to do with unity? We, we, we're just here to perform, give of our best, do what we have to do. But that's the question that I'm going to leave you with. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to answer it. Hmm. But I'm going to give you a lot of food for thought. So a little bit about me. Um, we would have mentioned the Olympics in 1996. I had the privilege to get a little taste of what that was like. And I was grateful to have qualified by breaking the Olympic record at the time. And it was such a thrill of excitement to hear your name announced in the five athletes that were going to be going there. And uh, to say that I was over the moon is an understatement. It was an absolute honor. And one thing about the Olympics is that for me, it was a different experience than what it was for many people. Now, I had the opportunity to take part in a practice meet, which would have been before the actual event itself. And uh, all exuberant and excited, uh, even though it was raining cats and dogs, I went blazing down that runway, trying to stay sharp before my event, which was going to be a week later. And uh, lightning had started, and they made a decision that I was going to be the last jumper. And as I hit that board to take off, seeing myself in the next week being with the best of the best, tragedy struck. I hit that board, it was wet, my foot slipped, and I tore my hamstring in three places. And as I crumpled in the ground into the sand, and saw at that point in time the stadium clearing out, I was like, how could this be over? 
here I was at the highest point of my life and the lowest point at the exact same time. But what I was grateful for is that even though I, I know that you run out of tears after two days, <laughs> even though I didn't eat for two days, weeping may endure for a night, but we athletes know joy always comes in the morning. And in spite of that, I still had the opportunity to be in the Olympic Village. The toughest part for me, and I smile seeing you here, Erskine, because he was with me through it all, he had to help me make the call to the parents. How do you call your parents at the highest point and tell them it's over? And as we know, these are things that you may experience as an athlete, but the beauty of being able to stay in the village while the Olympics went on is that it, it taught me so much. I got the opportunity to see firsthand how in spite of the world falling apart, anybody knows about the world falling apart right now? Does it seem so sometimes? Anybody like me start watching news for a little bit just by a, a show of hands, can you, okay, okay. No, the world is in utter chaos. Whether we're not peeping at what's going on in Gaza, we're seeing something going on in Ukraine, we're seeing drama, it's too much. But sports. The beauty of the Olympic Games and any high level event is that, y'all remember what COVID did to us? Anybody remembers the trauma that was COVID? By a show of hands, do anybody remember? A anybody got any hands? Okay, okay, okay. I remember it as traumatic because at the exact same time, the entire world came to a standstill. The entire world then realized, but I like human contact as much as I didn't like human contact. The entire world realized, but I like, I like communication. The entire world at the exact same time realized what the void of unity physically felt like. But then we come to sports. And we as athletes often take part in it, you know, blissfully just trying to execute our best performance, et cetera. But then we have to ask ourselves, do we have a role to play? You know. And what I'm going to do is expose you to three different aspects of what unity is, first of all. And then we're going to answer the question as to, we got something to do with this? Is that all right? So let's look at social interaction. When we think of unity, we think social interaction. I remember being in my teens, man, and when Bubbles was kicking, I in there squeeze upon a little step in a corner watching a basketball match. Now the old folks over on this side, they remember too, but they ain't, they ain't, they ain't one, make it look too obvious. And I was cheering for my team, and guess what? People that I didn't know that had on the same colors as me, we were friends for the afternoon. You understand? If a super point, a three pointer was, was, was thrown, we were high fiving. Well, I didn't know your name, but we we're buddies. And there was a unity just in a game of basketball for that one afternoon. And then I don't need to tell you all about football. Oh my goodness. I am tired of hearing I am Man U, I am Tottenham, I am what, what, what? I'm Arsenal, I'm an Arsenal boss, and then you got your things hanging from your car. Oh my goodness, you have never even been to some of these cities. But yet you have all the paraphernalia in the world. Why? Because there's something, something about identifying with others that just brings joy to your life. And then <laughs> it breaks down barriers. It surely does break down barriers when people unite with a common goal. You haven't wondered why NBC always, they always do it. They, they can't just show you the Olympics. They can't just show you the world championships. They have to share how she was raised with horses and she you know, woke up and she trained eight hours a day and then she took out the sheep in the afternoon. Why? They want you to unite with her in some form or fashion so that when she's doing her thing as a gymnast, you're now a gymnast. You are there clapping and rooting for her. There's a science to this thing, right? So pay attention whenever we watch on the big network screens what's going on with sport. 
They pull you in because it helps break down barriers. You're able to support people because you identify with something about them. So that's one aspect, the social interaction. And you see it in the thrill of victory and their God in the agony of defeat. The worst thing to do is go to a British football match and the majority say that their, their team loses. Disaster. Not only do they unify in their tears and sorrow, but the aftermath, I don't need to tell you, destruction. And then we look at unity in terms of cultural interaction. Why is it that all of these big events always have an opening ceremony with some sort of cultural presentation? Or a closing ceremony with some sort of entertainment? Why? Why do they always throw that in there? Why is it that when we Barbados invite people here, we either have the tuck band happening or something going on, Mother Sally coming out or somebody with a costume? Why do we do that? Because at the end of the day, each country, they want to showcase who they are. And every country is identified by their language, their money, their demographics, and of course, their culture. Now, you usually have some you know, big hits when you have a production and you put that cultural display out there. But then as poor Paris showed us with their opening ceremony, some things are not always a hit because people don't always identify with what you might showcase as all we. But think about it. Every time there's an event, we do something. And now you're going to look at that a little different. It's not just to take up a little five minutes while an activity is going on, but it's to show the world, the people who are at the event, what we have to offer. So cultural interaction is so critical and so important because it's not just about us turning up and performing and doing our best in tennis, in judo, in volleyball, but we want people to know who we are. When we show up as Barbados, as St. Kitts, as Dominica, uh, comme Guadeloupe, Monsieur, bonsoir. That's the accent of my French, don't ask me anymore. But when we show up, we come with a pride with our colors because we are celebrating who we are as a people. So when now you're in the next opening ceremony, you will see it a little bit differently. You're not just there to look cute, but you are letting people into the world of what your culture and country has to offer. And then there's something about celebrating diversity. One thing I love about sport is that you will realize there's so much diversity. I saw a 100 meter runner and I remember when he came out, can't remember the country he was from, but he was one of the shortest out there on the line. Um, bet you, my golly, wow, he was one of the fastest. It didn't matter the length of his legs. He showed up and he showed out. Then you see all the different persons with their personalities. I don't need to tell you about Noah Lyles. I don't, nothing said there. But they come to the fore and they celebrate diversity. Some people will love some people, some people will hate some people, but they're there. And the reality is that the gathering of all of them in one place makes it worth watching. As much as you talk about all the ego-driven athletes out there, you're watching them for a reason. They're providing you with some entertainment and something to talk about later on that day. And the beauty of the cultural aspect of it is that you see diversity. You can see a Sri Lankan team with, you know, uh, Eastern look, a, a darker skin tone. You can see Australia. You can see even mixed teams that are not national. You see with uh, persons representing countries all over the world. No. It is almost as if they're a microcosm as what we would love to achieve when pageant winners go out there and say, I want world peace. When you see a team comprising men from different countries and they are happy, why can't the world just be like this, no? Nah? But sports is the one place that we get to achieve it. So that's where you see unity as well. National pride, oh my goodness. It is so timely that the Olympics just ended, and I don't need to tell you, the beauty of the Olympics is whether you're an administrator, a coach, an athlete, grand-grand, you are watching something. 
all of a sudden, I knew people that never walked around the block a day in their life, but all of a sudden, they're gymnastics experts. Okay? They know about floor routines. They know about tumbling. I have been watching people who have never kicked anything in their life, but all of a sudden, they're sitting down watching. No, we're watching the football. We're getting up early to watch the football. Why? Why? There's something about the Olympics and these big games that make people feel happy. Why? But then we have to ask ourselves, is it you that's making us happy? Is it the outcome of the sport that's making us happy? Is it seeing the banner of our country that's making us happy? And a lot of people who are not necessarily sportsmen in and of themselves have a national pride. I remember recently when Shade Williams made the finals of the 400 meters, and let me tell you all something. To make a finals at the Olympic Games in any event is an achievement in itself. You understand? <laughs> the Olympics is where 1% of 1% of 1% of 1% of the world arrives. And they don't all make it to the end. I didn't make it to the end. There are people who competed, got knocked out in rounds, didn't make it to the end. To get to the finals in any event at the Olympics is a mega achievement. And there we were around the island, sitting down. I, I couldn't get to the TV in time. I scotched up there by my phone. But guess what? We knew that we were watching her at the same very time. People who never went to an event in their life, all of, but why she don't speed up around the corner? Ne <laughs> never did anything with track and field ever, but all of a sudden they're experts. But guess what? For that day, there was a feeling of unity, a spirit of togetherness. And even as we watched the other activities, and forgive me, folks, for being biased towards track and field. Tennis, where's tennis? I love you. I love you, too. Golf, I love you. I love you. Don't take it personal that they're all athletes up here, okay? Don't judge me. But remember when these athletes performed, and this is the reality of it, if there was no Beijing, in the event, we were identifying with the next Caribbean person. True or false? So I there sitting down with my chest tight as Jamaica launching this discus. And as far as I was concerned, he and me and we all together. You understand? When Julian Alfred was running the 100 meters, all I was saying, anybody but you, I said, come on, come on, come on, girl, come on. And I am up and I'm racing with this girl me, she, we, all of we together, right? And it was just a natural inclination. We had Lafon from Dominica. Anybody that was Caribbean, we were there rooting for them. Why? Because of unity. They almost represented us by proxy. If we were in the race, y'all with us, though. Y'all representing us. You understand? So there's a national pride when these people hit the fore and there's something that just stirs us up, knowing too that in the Caribbean we are small nations, we get to feel big but for a moment and identify with them. Symbols of hope. That's part of the nationalistic pride as well. Symbols of hope. There are some countries that have not seen a good day in a long, 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 long time. There are some countries that are experiencing poverty, chaos, medical issues, everything wrong, 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 wrong. But then guess what? Your countryman goes and wins a gold medal in something. What do you think happens? The whole country is like, ah! And for a minute, you forget your problems. For a minute, you come together, and this person is a symbol of hope. It isn't just about them getting a medal or a record but especially, let's look at, say, for example, Botswana. Did you all see the stadium full with all those people? And my man up there, like, I know he didn't want inside a riot, just like, mm, mm hmm But it was a symbol of hope. People felt hopeful. People felt like, if it's going to be all right, it's going to be okay. So here is the question. 
whose role is it anyways? We get a sense of unity in different aspects. We've looked at the social interaction, which is the fun part for fans, athletes alike. I remember uh, even at the Olympics when I caught myself and said, look, Sharita, let's make the best of it. I out there exchanging pins. I had a collection of pins. People, Vanuatu, I had to go and look in the atlas to see where's Vanuatu. But all of a sudden, I was linked to people around the world because we exchanged and stuff. Every time uh, track and field season comes around, I have this euphoria that I could actually run a 400 meters. Happens every time in the school sports comes around. And guess what? I dig up my little Cuba vest. I put on my little tights. I hit the track and then I realize this is not gonna happen. But then next week, I pull out the Jamaica shirt and the Jamaica tights and I go to the gym because I said, I, uh, that's, that's the one place at least that I could look as if I know what's going on. But imagine I have vest and leggings and all that. I want to date myself from years ago, a couple years ago, right? And they still fit, they still fit. But even in that, you know, that's how I stay connected with the memories, the people, and life goes on. But whose role is it anyways to provide unity in sports? Hmm. Food for thought. Let's think about it. Is it the playmakers, the administrators, the policy makers, heads of organizations? Because for us to go out on the field or the court, there are people behind the scenes putting everything together, making the trip happen, organizing the uniforms, coordinating with the, the other societies. Is it the playmakers? Is it their job to bring that sense of unity that we crave when sports time comes around? Hmm. Or maybe it's the cheerleaders. What do y'all think? Is it the cheerleaders? Is it the fans who are there supporting y'all that you're hoping come out and bring in their pom-poms and cheering you on? Is it the fact that St. Kitts is saying down next to St. Lucia, saying down next to Dominica? Is it the fans that bring that sense of unity to the playing field? Or is it the gladiators? And uh, the gladiators, let me show you who these gladiators are. Who y'all think the gladiators are? Who are the gladiators? Let me hear, I can't, I can't hear you. The athletes, we use a nice polite term, athletes. But maybe y'all are the gladiators. Maybe y'all are there for the entertainment of all. What do you think? Could it be that? That you are there to draw the masses to the field, to fill the stadium, to bring in the money. Have y'all heard the type of money that goes around in NFL? I was watching something on Netflix and one guy renewed his contract for four years for just $76 million. Just, yeah, just 76. Huh? Oh my gosh. So let's ask ourselves, who is responsible for unifying sport? Who is responsible for pulling us into the stands, for getting us all excited, for setting a scene that we come there and we get this <sighs> euphoric buzz, even if it's just for the next two hours, who is responsible? The administrators would say, but it is I. Without me, there would be no event. <sighs> Thank you. The cheerleaders would say, but without us, there's nothing. There's no reason for you to come out and play. But then the gladiators would say, but without us, what is there to even enjoy in the first place? So I beg you, putting that all together, <laughs> who is responsible for fostering unity 
in sports. When was the last time y'all came to a speech and the speaker refused to answer the question? But it makes you think. It makes you think. And I dare to say this, I believe that in the context of wider society, it is a myriad of efforts that brings the world together, even if it's just for one moment. That it's a synergistic sort of relationship in which we can't do without each other. But it forces you, whether administrator, coach, or athlete, that every time you get out there on the big field to perform, that you don't just see it as me, myself, and I, but you see yourself as part of something grandiose. I want you to see yourselves as bringing joy to human beings all over the world because this world needs sport. Because the way we are going, if you were to take sports away, how, how this thing gonna work out? We all think, yeah, it won't, be, it won't be a pleasant place. So folks, I'm gonna leave you with that. I believe that sport is a powerful tool. It is a unifying tool in nations, in cities, and throughout the world. And I look forward to it blossoming, but as you go forth, now hopefully you will understand why you are participating. Not just because you love playing volleyball, not just because you love the camaraderie of all the others on the field, but because you see yourselves as part of a much bigger picture. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. As Marcia would have said, it's my pleasure as a past participant after the first session to be able to thank you all for your attendance tonight. Um, I am one, as um, Sasha would have mentioned, a baby in sports and have grown up now through sports. But I definitely want to um, thank um, Bishop Selwyn for your prayer and dedicating this weekend to the Lord and the work that he's going to do in our young people. Definitely is something that we need um, here in Barbados to have our young people, the future of our sports administrators, be able to have sessions like these. Also want to thank the board of the BOA led by our honorable I'm going to Honorable President um, Sandra Osborne for your dedication to programs like these. As this is the fourth year, and your support has definitely been beneficial and is appreciated. Also, I'd like to thank the members of the BOA Education Commission, those present and those online, as well as other members of the BOA staff, as well as any um, other past participants of the NSYP session who maybe join us online or other. Uh, members of our partner groups. Also want to thank Mr. Ryan Braffitt, um, who will be <laughs> assisting with some of our sessions. And in advance, we would like to thank those who have given of their time in the planning of this session, um, such as the working group, as well as those who will serve on panels and be guest speakers in this weekend session. This, this morning I said week, because I know it's so much that we're gonna cover, so that was on me. 
<laughs> not trying to plant any seeds, but um, <laughs> so we want to thank everyone who is giving up their time to impart knowledge and wisdom to the young people. And we want to also thank the participants for taking up your time to be a part of a session like this. Um, this is something that hopefully will spark, if, it ha if you have not had that spark already, your desire to become the next generation of leaders within sport in Barbados. You're never too young. Um, I have had amazing opportunities in my, in my life so far, and I'm not that much older than some of you. Um, so it's never too, too early to get started being the change that you want to see. So that being said, I want to thank you all again for being present. We do also appreciate those who would have joined us tonight uh, online and leave you to, to really think over, oh, I did not, my apologies, I did not thank our guest speaker who did an amazing job. <laughs> my apologies, Mrs. Sharita Odell, um, because that was really amazing. And I loved how you did not give an answer to the presentation. So I hope that over the next couple of days that we really will ponder whose role is it to foster and inspire unity and the role of sports in that. So with that being said, thank you all. Thank you, Soraya. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the official part of our opening ceremony for this, the fourth national session for young participants. Our participants have already been pressed fully into action for the day. They've had a tour of the Barbados Olympic Museum, a career showcase, as well as a tour of the historic Kensington Oval, taking a look at all of the sustainability initiatives happening there. There's more action for them tonight with a team quiz. Then we follow with two packed days, examining a range of areas, some of them you heard mentioned, including the preparation of a modern athlete, the use of technology, the voice of athletes in modern sport, gender in this current sporting landscape, as well as other creative and physical activities. So I want to thank you once again for joining us here in person, as well as virtually. I am Marsha Boyce. Do enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>